Hello and welcome. How's everyone doing? As you can see today is a pretty cloudy day, but it could be worse because it could be raining, it could be really, really cloudy and there could be a thunderstorm or some massive wind. So all those weather conditions would avoid me to film outside. It's decently warm outside, so I could uh, still wear shorts and a t-shirt. So today's video is going to be about which sensor size is the right one for you. If you're into camera stuff or camera gear, you may know there is medium format. That's the really, really high end stuff like the Hasselblad cameras. Then underneath there is full frame. That's uh, way cheaper, but still really, really expensive. And then underneath that there is APS-C and then micro four thirds. If you are a beginner and you don't know what kind of camera you should get, I would give the piece of advice to you that you should get an APS-C camera because those are the cheapest ones to get because if you look at Canon's lineup, you could get a 2000D new for around 500 bucks or if it's a deal, maybe less. But uh, if you know what you want to shoot, for example, you want to shoot landscapes with, for example, a fisheye or something really, really wide with a really wide field of view, I would go with a full frame camera. But the full frame camera is not the answer to everything. You could also get the Micro Four Thirds camera if you know that you are going to be into birding or you would like to shoot race cars at the racetrack or spot cars far away or maybe at the sports event i would go with the micro four thirds camera because if you have a 1200 millimeter lens on a full frame it's going to stay at 1200 millimeter but if you put it on a micro four thirds camera on the other hand it's going to be a 2400 millimeter lens because the Micro Four Thirds has a crop factor of two. So let me show you what I mean. Even if this one is a crop sensor camera, you're still gonna get what I mean. If that is the picture of a full frame camera, that is going to be a picture of an APC camera and this of a Micro Four Thirds. And that without changing the focal length. So. If you are seeing a bird down there in the tree with a Micro Four Thirds camera, because it has a way smaller sensor, you will be able to get way closer to the subject. I was at a plane meeting and there was a birding or a bird photographer there and he shot with a Fuji, which is a Micro Four Thirds camera. I talked with him and he told me that He's using a Micro Four Thirds camera because that enables him to get way closer to the subject he's willing to shoot. But uh, for example, if you are shooting a lot inside and in dim light conditions, I would go for a full frame camera because those have a larger sensor. And then that means that you're getting a better low light performance. So that means less noise, less grain and sharper pictures because it can capture more light. So, and if you, are, you don't know what your niche is gonna be, you just want to try out bird photography and then maybe some landscapes, portraits or some other stuff, I would get an APS-C camera. I made a video on my channel a few days ago, five cameras for less than $500. So if your budget is pretty tight, I'm gonna make some others too. I'm gonna put it as an info card on the top on the video and so you can check it out. That's uh, if you don't know how to design. But if you've got uh, the financial support, on the other hand, and you want to get a full frame camera, I'm not going to hold you back. 
uh, get a full frame camera but if you don't know you want to shoot get a nice APS-C camera like this Canon M50 Mark II which is a mirrorless camera maybe you have seen the video that I think that DSLRs are gonna disappear and I see the appeal of a DSLM because they're way lighter than my bulky 750D but that's another subject I see uh, the advantage of a crop sensor because if uh, I would have a full frame camera I would have to crop in uh, digitally so that would degrade the picture's quality but if I crop in physically with a sensor that uh, has a two times crop it's not going to degrade its quality but some uh, manufacturers I think Nikon and Sony does that that on the that Sony on the A7R line you can enable the APS-C mode so it's going to take just a small part of the sensor but you're not going to be able to get that close like with uh, a Mac Offer first because it still has 0.5 times a higher crop factor so that's still that's uh, if you are into bird photography and the APC is between my coffer thirds and full frame uh, if you are looking into a Nikon camera it's going to be a crop factor of one and a half but a Canon camera is going to be a bit more it's one 0.6 so 0.1 times closer but otherwise there's still nice APS-C cameras you can get on the market and if you want to get something more pro you can take a look in the 7D or cameras like that because now you can find some really nice ones on uh, eBay for example or other places just be careful not to be uh, ripped off or scammed when buying a camera so be careful when you do that and I think that's gonna be it so if you don't know I'm gonna just uh, summarize all that if you are into bird photography take a look at a micro for first camera if you don't know what you want to shoot I would advise you to buy an APS-C camera and if you uh, know that you want to shoot portraits you would like to have that shallow depth of field that higher contrast between the highs and the lows so it has a higher dynamic range sensor or the better low light performance I would go with a full frame if you found this video helpful don't forget to like it so it can spread to more people and subscribe see you in the next one